Jonathan Swan of Axios interviewed President Trump, and it was really an incredible interview. Um, I recommend you watch the whole thing. I think it's like 40 minutes or so. He actually asked decent questions, and he's aggressive. There are some questions I think the framing was way off, but the sentiment was, I'm going to actually ask real questions, and it wasn't, you know, typical, let's hold hands and sing kumbaya nonsense that happens most of the time with the media, especially when you're sitting face-to-face -face with politicians. Um, and it wasn't the kind of anti-Trumpism that is just annoying, like the, you know, let's talk about tweets and stuff. It was more, let's talk about these substantive issues. So I want to show you the portion on COVID. Let's take a look and then we'll discuss. I, the, the figure I look at is death. And death is going up now. Okay, no, and it's no, a thousand no. a day. If you look at death... Yeah, it's going up look, again. Let's look. Daily death. Take a look at some of these charts. I'd okay? love to. We're going to look. Let's look. And if you look at death... Yeah. Per, it started to go up again. One. Well, right here, the United States is lowest in numerous categories. Uh, we're lower than the world. Lower than we're the lower world? than what is that? Europe. In Take what? Look. In what? Take a look. Right here. Here's case death. Oh, you're doing death as a proportion of cases. I'm talking about death as a proportion of population. That's where the US is really bad. Well, well, Much worse than South Korea, Germany, etc. You can't you can't do that. You have Why to go, can't I do that? You have to go by you have to go by where look, here is the United States. You have to go by the cases. The cases Why are not dead. as a proportion when of population? We have somebody, what it says is when you have somebody that yeah. has it, where there's a case, oh, okay. the people that live sure. from oh. those cases. It's surely a relevant statistic to say if the US has X population and X percentage of death of that population no, versus South Korea. No, because you have to go by the cases. Well, look at South Korea, if, for example. 51 million population, 300 deaths. It's like, it's you, crazy you compared to know that. I do. It's you on don't the, know it's that. Jo you think they're faking their statistics? Uh, South Korea? I, I, an I advanced won't get into country? that because they have a very good relationship yeah. with the country. But you don't know that. And they have spikes. Look, here's Germany, one. Germany, low, 9,000. Here's one right here. United States. You take anyway. the number of cases. Okay. Now look, we're last. Meaning we're first. Last? I don't know we what we're first in. As a well, take a look. Okay. Again, it's cases. Just, okay. Um, and we have cases. Because I mean, of the testing. Wait, a thousand Americans are dying a day, but I understand. I understand on cases, it's different. No, but you're not reporting it correctly, Jonathan. I think I am, but... If you take a look at this other chart, okay. look, this is our testing, I believe. This is the testing, yeah. Yeah, we do more tests. No, wait a minute. Well, don't we get credit for that? And because we do more tests, we have more cases. In other words, we test more, we have... But, now, take a look. The top one, that's a good thing, not a bad thing. The, the top, Jonathan. If, 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 if hospital rates were going down and deaths were going down, I'd say terrific. You deserve to be praised for well, testing, they but even, they're all going you up. You know, they very rarely 60,000 Americans are in hospital. If you watch the news or dying or read the papers, they usually talk about new cases, new cases, new cases. I'm talking about death. Well, you look it's at death. Up. Death is way down from where it was. It's, it's a thousand death. a day. It was two and a half thousand. It went down to 500. Now it's going up death. again. Excuse me. Where it was is much higher than where it is right now. It went down and it's it went up spiked, again. But now it's going down again. It's, it's going, going down in Arizona. It's going down in Florida. Nationally it's going, going down up. in Texas. Take a look at this. These are the tests. It's going down in Florida? Yeah, it's going. It leveled out and it's going down. That's my report as of yesterday. Anyway, Mr. President, if I could change subject. It is going down in Arizona. It Arizona, is it is. Texas, Arizona, it is. Texas it has is big spiked, problems. And it is. It, it spiked, and it's now going down in Florida. It's evened out and going down in Florida. I have to see those. Figures. But but you have to look at this. This is the number of tests compared. I to the I don't rest deny of your world. figures. You've done more tests by far than the rest right. of the world. I don't and deny because that. Because we've done more tests, we have more cases. You, you have can take more infections. Check it, check it out, in Mr. Your President. Um, different subject. It's you know, Jank Uger pointed this out on Twitter. I think he's exactly right. That. Like, it's tragic because of the reality of the situation, but that literally looked like a, like a Curb Your Enthusiasm skit or like a It's Always Sunny in Philadelphia scene. It, it's, it was amazing. Like, imagine going back in time to, like, 2009 and saying, by the way, just so you know, in the future, Trump is going to be president. There's going to be a pandemic that kills... As of right now, about 160,000 Americans. Um, and then here's a back and forth that he's having with an interviewer over it. If you showed them that exact back and forth, they'd be like, that impossible. Like, this is ridiculous. Like, that's, ob that's the fakest thing 
It seems like they're acting. Doesn't it seem like they're acting? That really was like a Curb Your Enthusiasm scene. Or It's Always Sunny in Philadelphia. I... It's amazing, man. I, I can't believe this is the real world. Now, let's talk about, you know, the substance of what's going on there. Trump has the salesman instinct. And he's his own biggest fan and his own biggest advocate. So his instinct is to always go on the offense, be aggressive, and make his own case. Now, in many contexts, that salesman instinct is a massive political bonus. It helps. Because, think of it like this. If there's an issue where people are persuadable, he's going to try to persuade them. But here's the problem with that instinct, and this is when it becomes a liability. When it's not an issue where people can be persuaded. So, guys, th there's no denying it. We live in a country that is just being absolutely obliterated by COVID-19. There's no denying it. People have felt, everybody has felt the effects in one way or another. Whether it was through the economic shutdown, whether it was through losing a job, somebody they know losing a job, you keep your job but you have a pay cut, you know somebody who got it, you know somebody who got sick and was in the hospital. Uh, when you have 160,000 Americans dead, and you have millions and millions who've had it and have experienced the effects, there is no amount of salesmanship and persuasion that can override that cold, hard reality. Which is why it really is just a, a, a massive unmasking moment for Trump. In 2016, he was able to argue that Hillary is the establishment, Hillary is the status quo, because she is the establishment and she is the status quo. He was able to portray her as the insider and he's the outsider. She's the one who outsourced your jobs. She's the one who did the endless wars. She's the one who's corrupt and taking the money. He was able to make that case. People are like, okay, cool, let's roll the dice on this guy. But now, Trump is the establishment. You've been in control, dude. You've implemented your policies. So now, when something happens and his response has been abysmal, you got nowhere to go. So what do you do? You got to try to bullshit your way out of it and act like you're doing a good job. And that's, and that's deeply unserious. Because a real leader, part of being a real leader is acknowledging the state of affairs, acknowledging the reality, and adjusting and moving forward with a plan. And moving forward and, and carrying the burden with you. And, and owning up to it and facing it and doing everything you can. You can't do that if you're denying that there, it already, that it's as bad as it is. You can't deny it's all that bad and then effectively respond. Because you're denying it's all that bad. So if it's not all that bad, then what is there to do? I can't really do much else now, can I? So this is, it's, this is not going to work. The number one issue in people's minds today is COVID. Trump's approval rating, I just saw the poll yesterday. Trump's approval rating on COVID, 31%. That's only his hardcore, hardcore, hardcore fans. Everybody else is like, well, obviously, this is a disaster. So, it, it's not going to work, man. It's not going to work. And by the way, every, everybody knows. Like, even if you're a hardcore Trump supporter, you know he's just cherry-picking stuff and trying to use whatever argument he can to make the case that our reaction has been okay. Like, even you know that, even if you're the most hardcore Trump supporter. Like, he's they're skewing the numbers and picking misleading things and say, oh, this this is the indicator. Like, even the idea, oh my God, the testing, oh my God. Yeah, as a raw number, we do more tests than anybody else. As a raw number per capita, we're like 30-something in the world. You know? And by the way, uh, there was a time when I thought I had it, I couldn't get a test. That, like, this idea that, oh my God, we're just, we're handling it so well and there's so many tests and that's why the number's so high. No, it's also because the virus is still spreading and spreading more so. There was a giant spike in, in numbers for the virus in a bunch of different states. That's why it's going up. It's not just because you're doing more testing. He makes it seem like other countries are, like, hiding the tests or something. Not true. Not true. And we've discussed... There, there, there were many ways to approach this pandemic and this disaster... He didn't do any of the things that he needed to do in order to fix it. So you could have gone, you know, the UK 
route or 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 Germany and what they did. Uh, you know, Japan I think is probably the best example. Now they've had a recent uptick, but it's because you know now restaurants and bars are open. So what Japan did is they had limited economic shutdowns, only the things that they had to shut down. Um, but really, the main thing was universal masks. And so for the longest time, they had less than a thousand COVID deaths. Uh, Jonathan Swan brings up South Korea. He said less than 300. So basically, if you do social distancing, universal masks, targeted economic shutdowns, then you're okay. Or if you want to do the full shutdown, you would have had to do a wage replacement system. You would have had to do the temporary nationalization of wages where you pay people like 70% of their wages and you furlough everybody. You don't fire people because now we got like 20% real unemployment. So on top of the pandemic, we have an economic implosion. And he, again, he's still out there trying, well, if you look at this very narrow way of, of viewing the situation, then maybe what we did is not all that bad. The way we're handling COVID is abysmal. It's us, Brazil, and like India responding worst in the world. And we were just woefully unprepared. Just It's totally inadequate, our response. And he's trying to cherry pick little things to say it's okay. That's not going to help him. That's not going to help him. Even if he just did the Cuomo style fake leadership with the daily press conferences like he did at the beginning, back then his approval rating was over 50% on the coronavirus response, even though he wasn't doing much different. But he was doing the daily press briefings and making it seem like he's a leader. I'm serious and I'm tackling the problem as much as possible. But now it's just, you know, obfuscate, deny, downplay. And this this is why no matter what he does, he keeps dropping in the polls. This is why Biden's got like a 10-point lead. Biden! Biden! <sighs> that was an incredible... I, I do feel like this is going to be one of those like legendary moments in in the Trump presidency, this interview, and this moment specifically on COVID, because it just, it's, it's just the perfect encapsulation of the point in time. Like this guy who only knows how to obfuscate and deflect and downplay to protect his ego, like now you see the deadly consequences of it because the conversation is on a pandemic. And there's no spinning it. Imagine if it was a Democratic president and 160,000 people were dead from a pandemic. Would Trump be out there like, well, if you look at this narrow way of viewing the problem, then maybe we didn't do all that bad. No, he'd be on the entire, are you kidding me? He goes after Biden ruthlessly for swine flu, and it was like maximum 12,000 people dead from swine flu. And the actual, the official number I actually think is pretty, is lower than that. But he goes after Biden for that, and it's like, okay, well, yours is 160,000 so far, it's going to keep going up. So, like, what are you doing? He's in trouble. This interview was, you know, a real mask-off moment.